Never trust what you find online. <laughs> Seems like there's one error in this sheet. I'll go check and make sure that it's just one. But the one-to-one -one exchange here should be an attacker eliminated instead. And that means my setup, which was counting on making lots of one-to-one -one attacks because it's all I could figure out, uh, is going to have to devolve into two-to-one attacks. And that's going to change everything because uh, I think I was planning on attacks down here. Let's see, I had like a dozen I was going to throw into here. Well, that's worth a dozen. And it's valuable because it allows me to, not quite, but to come close to cutting off this unit and make it hard for that unit to get out of there easily. Well, I'm not going to be able to make that attack. And I'm going to have to redo the German setup, which means probably way too much effort <laughs> for what this game is. I mean, I really agonized to figure out what I was going to do. And when I looked at this chart, I was initially looking for two to ones. When I got the chart printed out, I said, oh, one to one's the same as two to one. Great. Uh, the other thing is I found somewhere it was saying casualties are based on the attack factors of the defending units, and they are doubled, which that may have been some kind of weird errata or something, but I don't know. So let's see what we got here for combat results. When an exchange is rolled, the player with fewer attack factors, yeah. Um, Yeah, okay, so it is doubled, and it is attack factors, not defensive factors. Um, apparently that changed in the 74 rules. I'm not sure I had it right before. But, yeah, that's going to, I mean, I, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Because uh, the actual attack factors doubled are definitely bigger than the defense factors, and that fit into my exchange category. I almost feel like I can't attack. Like, I could not come up with a three-to-one attack in this game at all. Um, and just with the defensive line I built. And that just seems unreasonable. And this doesn't look all that weak. Now, what may be weak is that I can slip around the back door and there aren't enough units to defend um, the line as a whole. The assumption might be that the Russians try to defend up here a little bit more, but I chose the river line instead and figured, well, I'm going to have trouble with the Germans, you know, coming across the border. I want to throw a hefty force there and then I'll get my replacements and I'll be able to save things. Well, maybe the Germans don't even attack there if you do this setup. Uh, we'll see. All right, so uh, some advice was given to me. I mean, the biggest advice I should have is just clean this piece of shit off and put it away. I, it's not, I'm sure it's not a bad game. There's a reason, you know, it attracted people to the hobby and everything. But I got to tell you, it is so antithetical to what I enjoy. Anyway, um, not just World War II East Front, the most boring subject other than maybe World War II West Front. <laughs> Uh, but for me, but on top of that, um, in order to make these, to make any attacks that make any sense, i.e. three to one attacks, I'm going to have to find soaks. And, uh, I'm not that sure. I mean, like, so like here, if I make an attack here, then maybe I can get one in from two spaces against here. But <coughs> I've already kind of accounted for this and was having real trouble with this defense finding anywhere where I could launch better than a two to one attack. And, and I mean, I'm going to have to reset up. And here's the thing, whatever I set up, I have to remember how the fuck I'm going to move the pieces to get them to the exact special spaces where they're going to be able to manage 
this you know carefully worked out attack and I have to do that across the whole board you know <laughs> it trying to get something like that to work in an Africa core where there's a couple of stacks to hit sure and I mean this is not a big game but just the nature of the terrain how harsh uh, the setup is it's really leaving me feeling like I just don't fucking want to play it you know <laughs> um I know why I hate these guys. But anyway, you know, I mean, maybe I wasn't really looking at this space. Maybe I can get an attack in there. So, like, okay, there's 13 defensive factors there. That would mean I need to be able to get 39 strength points. Well, the only way I can get 39 strength points in there, I'm not going to be able to get into this hex, is attacking from two hexes. Can't be done. Okay. Well, what about this guy? You know, I can only attack him from one hex. Great, can't be done. What about this hex? This one I've already accounted for, and oh look, I can hit, you know, from three hexes. Well, I'm not going to be able to hit from this hex because I won't have movement that'll get me through the mountains, so screw that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it is really, really hard to find an attack, and... I'm not seeing where soaks actually are going to help, at least anywhere down to about here. So let's, uh, let's look down here. Will they help me here? So I could get three units against this, make it a fourth unit against that, a uh, fourth hex against that. That's got a 16 defense. Uh, 16, it's going to be doubled, 32. I'm going to need 94 strength points. I don't think I have 94 strength points that I can, you know, I mean, this would be my one attack, right? <sighs> God. <sighs> I came up here with thoughts of trying this out, but I'm just not sure I see it. And I feel like I'm just going to plow my shit in and hope to get magical die rolls and win. You know, I mean, that, that's how I feel when I'm faced with something like this. It's not, oh, it's a challenge to try to figure out the little puzzle that might just solve this defense. Yeah, we're just going to walk away today. Uh, I don't know, maybe try again later tonight. I doubt it. Maybe tomorrow. I mean, we're going we're gonna to do something, roll some dice and kill off the Germans, but that's about all I can see coming of this because I just do not have the mind to try to calculate all this crap out. And I, I actually don't see, I mean, like I was saying, I, I don't see where the soaks are going to help me much. Uh, it's just a matter of there are only so many spaces. I mean, what, what, what about that? Because this is the one place I think I could use a soak to make it, because I could soak with a unit here, so then I've got four hexes. It's the only place I can see. So 96 divided by Four is 24 strength points per hex. I'm allowed three stacking units. I cannot get that. Um, I have something like five eight point units. I would need 20 of them, right? No, 12 of them in order to do this. <laughs> in order to get to the three to one. Oh, wait, did I even? No, uh, 16. Let me, let me see. 32, yeah, 96, yeah, yeah. And I'm tempted to just leave my units set up as they are and just swing in. Uh, but I think these were set up to, like, manage that. Oh, let's get lots of one-to-one -one attacks because it's just as crappy as two-to-one. <laughs> well, it ain't. But let's muddle through this shit. Now, instead of resetting everything up. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull all the Germans off. I'm going to slap them down where I want them to be for the attacks. Assure myself they could get there. And I'm not going to worry about the first turn's movement. Um, it seems like the only reasonable way to actually um, compute all this in such a, a manner that, you know, I can figure out where I want to attack and then actually end up where I want it to be to do it. <laughs> so this is where we're going to end up. You can see <laughs> Mainly didn't cross the border because I just can't get attacks. Um, the best I'm getting are a couple two to ones. I'm not going to make any one to ones. Uh, I didn't see any advantage to doing so in terms of soaks. Maybe I could have gotten another two to one down here if I like did a shitty attack. But 
it just wasn't much. Up here we're crossing over, we're running a couple of units back here. Now this is where the Russian position is weak. And I've already mentioned this, and this could be, you know, the fatal flaw that destroys what well, looked like a pretty strong defense. But I still think that I'll be able to, to cover the important cities, Moscow, Stalingrad, and Leningrad. Um, they're just, you know, it's not like there's a horde of Finns and, and Germans running down this way. And Romanians, actually. Um, all right, so let's, let's start rolling some dice. Uh, does it matter what order we attack in? Not really. I'm not cutting any lines here. I only have two attacks. Excellent. This will be fun. Okay, so I've got 18 and 19 and 19. 38, 40, 56 to 28, which works out to be a 2 to 1 attack. We'll go over here and see what we get from that. And we roll a six. Look, it's an attacker eliminated. Excellent. There aren't going to be many Germans left after this. <laughs> All right, so oh, this is sort of the, the cream of the German army going away here. Right? Okay. Leaves open an attack that the Russians can make. Maybe. We'll see. Over here, I think we have another 2 to 1, which is 16, 16, and 16. There's 48 to 24. And we'll see if we can roll another 6. Oh, we can't even hit the table. No, I'm not going to count something that falls on the floor. And yes, this is an Avalon Hill die. Three. Defender back two. Okay, now this is dangerous. Um, uh, these guys weren't doubled. They didn't have to be. Okay, which means no advance after combat, which could be kind of interesting. Uh, and that means it's not as important where I withdraw to. Oh. I can't, oh, I don't think I can withdraw. No. See, it's hard, these stupid mounted maps instead of, they just don't align very well. So I've got to go back here as my first move. So we'll stay on the rail line for what that's worth. That is the German side. And uh, I mark things here for who's gone or whatever. And now we get to the Ruskies and you know, we're underway. It's going to be easy now. The pieces are on the board. They're stuck where they are. We're going to, we're going to see what, what doom comes. Okay, so, um, what the Russians need to do at this point, a few things. One, I don't have a good attack here. Um, I could isolate German units, but that doesn't do much of anything. Yeah, they will have to blow their way through, but... Basically, I, uh, surrounding someone pretty much just exposes your units to better attacks. <laughs> it doesn't freeze the enemy or anything like that. So I've got a couple of defects right now. One is I got pushed out of this space, and we got to think real hard about that. I think the fact that we weren't defending um, right on the line anyway means, and the way this is set up, means that we can leave that alone. What we've lost space-wise there, if we move, we have to attack. And the German stacks three deep, they're not gonna, they're not gonna fall to me. The other defect I have is over here, where the Finns are running around. I have to prevent them from doing much now. They're speed four, so I have a lot of time to play around here. But basically what I'm gonna be doing is I believe with 24 strength points here, I have plenty of room. So he has eight. Uh, he's not gonna be attacking a 12 strength point unit, which means that I can swerve some of these around back there. Otherwise, I'm just gonna leave things alone. <laughs> yeah. 
I think this game has just been become incredibly simple because the Germans lost both their attacks. I can't possibly win anywhere along here. <laughs> so this becomes the only place where I can focus my war. Um, I may actually need to spread out and defend better. Although, again, if the Russians attack, they attack. At this point, when they start using poker chip, or I'm going to use poker chips to represent the replacement points, I'm assuming that this chart is correct. I know <laughs> this was incorrect, but uh, I know there were some corrections that were made on this, and I think uh, those were up to date. I can look it up and make certain. But as of right now, uh, the Germans are getting their replacement points. Four doesn't buy me anything, so I can't slap down any new units. Not that I have room in Warsaw, so... Uh, I'm going to have eight next turn, so I probably want to get at least one unit out of there and probably structure things a little bit differently. But I don't see any capacity to attack at this point. The only thing I've got is the uh, the outflank, really. <laughs> that's it. And, you know, that's going to buy the Russians a lot of time. Until August of 41, the Russians had to peel a unit off to make it into Leningrad. Uh, that meant weakening this stack. There might be an opportunity for the Germans to do something. They get four more replacement points. Uh, Something wrong there. Um, I got two left. Let's, uh, let's move this somewhere. I meant I meant to have something like this. It's still too strong for the Russians to really do much about. Okay. Um, but that lets me bring in one of my big eight-point units, which, given the weakening in the north, might mean something. We'll see. Actually, managed to get a decent attack in place. I think 11, 17, 25, 35, 42 to 14. That is a three to one, finally. Because <laughs> things are getting spread out. Now, three to one. Oh, four. One, two, three, four gets me a defender back, too. And we were doubled, so we can move forward. We'll move some units forward. Yay. But that puts us now on the Russian side of things. And now we have to start thinking because our defensive line has fallen, which means we have to fall back. And the next defensive line that's any good, uh, you know, is maybe along the Divina. <laughs> Cracking the line means a lot. It means that things can start getting plucked. Um, I think what I'm going to want to do is start shifting forces from the south, north, but discovering, you know, I'm going to need like some strong points to get me, you know, uh, to Minsk or whatever, uh, where there'll be some uh, multiplier there. And that, that means really giving up a lot of territory at this time. I'm going to form the line I want to. I'm actually going to hold on to Brailatovsk though. Force the Germans to launch a pretty hefty attack there. I'm going to be starting to get some replacement points. I'm going to bring units in, I guess. But that's kind of the anchor to the rest of the line. And I'd rather not give up space there until I have to. Whereas up here, I feel like I do have to. I'm not able to extend any further. This is, this is threatening to be dangerous. Um, this is a possibility. Uh, there's a two to one attack up here. Where it's gonna be is hard to tell. Uh, it could easily be on the end or it could be even in the middle if I gather all of the forces. The danger, of course, is if I start out running my supply lines, you know, where the Russians can move in and cut them off, is there some risk there? Not as much as there would be in most World War II operational type games. You know, most of them 
especially on the simpler side, levied a much harsher penalty on running out of your supply. Here, yeah, you can just run back into it when you need to, you know. Um, so uh, it's probably fairly safe for the Germans to go there. The problem is it's not safe if the Russians position themselves up here. Then the Germans will have to break through, and that could be a serious problem. Has bank four more replacement points, and now I'm looking. Hey, something's opened up. Lots of somethings have opened up, and now I have all kinds of options, and they all result in trying to figure out numbers again and get the odds down perfectly. Uh, clearly, trying to break into this has some value, but I feel like I would rather break the north open wide. So that's where I'm gonna. Focus now. This stock can be hit by two hexes without worrying about any kind of soaks or anything. I could soak this and hit a third hex here, but it's only 14 strength points, not modified by anything. Over here, it's 20 strength points, but I can only really hit it with two hexes. I'd have to attack that too. Can I do that? Yeah, maybe. I mean. But now I have to like look at all my numbers and figure out the perfect little combat odds that uh, optimize, you know, my attacks here. And that's what the game all becomes. They talk about it as chess-like. I mean, in a sense it is, but it's chess with lots of stupid addition in it, you know? Lots of arithmetic going on. And I'm not a big fan of doing a lot of arithmetic in my games. Um, I'm not sure if that's kind of the magic that people were talking about, because it kind of attracted the, you know, the kind of nerdy, oh, I can do these quick calculations in my head and figure this out. Um, and, you know, combine a very, very mild version of the strategy of chess, <laughs> which, of course, is less than that of Go, with this kind of... Yeah, I like to do math in my head a lot. You know, <laughs> I don't like that. Um, I know a lot of the euros are based on doing a lot of calculations and doing an optimization problem over them. That, to me, that's just not interesting. You know, and it's one of the reasons I kind of like the OCS with its. Yeah, you can't fucking count the odds. You know, <laughs> at least in concept. Um, being able to look at the other person's units without counting the odds is something that I have to do. Just in order because I walk away, you know? I'm not gonna remember what the hell is there. Well, in this case, I can see everything. It's all calculable, but man, it's just obnoxious. It's like this mental mechanical burden for playing, you know, what you feel like, yeah, I should just be able to throw things in. All right, yeah, it's no worse than the Napoleon's Art of War, but. <laughs> Shifted some units up and said, I gotta get to 42, I got 26, I'm not gonna be able to make it on two. Now, the serious players of this are like, oh no, you can't take anything back once you touch it and move it. You know, it's like the chess players with their idea, not that they wanna play the best opponent that they can or the best strategy that they can, yeah, that they wanna, you know, face someone playing as well as they can. No, it's every fucking little mistake you make adds up. I'm not gonna play that way, I don't play that way in anything. But this game is kind of designed for it, and uh, you know. But the only way that I can see what's going on is to move pieces around and to see what they do. So now the number, so 42 I can't get to. I can't get to 21, I don't think. I don't know, because I have to look at all my pieces and try to find the 21s, you know. The movement rates are fast enough, there's enough space to run. There, uh, <laughs> it's just, the same kind of obnoxious, annoying actions I had to take at the setup time are just continuing throughout the game. You know, find the, that one attack that I can make. Can I make a three to one? No, okay, where can I make two to one? You know, I mean, it's just like, oh, fuck, man. I'll show you the kind of crap. So this is 17, double this 34. I need 68 to get a two to one. So I count all of these and they come out exactly at 68. And then I think to myself, well, what, a, uh, you know, I might lose Warsaw if I can attack throughout this. Okay, well, and I've moved some of my pieces, of course. Um, well, that would suck, obviously. <laughs> but, okay, let's think about it. Well, um, 
then I count all the pieces and find out that I've got like, I've only got one, two, oh wait, actually I got one, two, three, four, five hexes. Ooh, I could do it. How valuable is it? I don't know. Because I could also launch an attack against this unit. And, and that's, that's what I've got to think about. But I've got a, a lot of slow stuff and I'm not sure I can get much of it into play there. So there I've got 12, 22, 29 to 7. That sounds better. That sounds like I can get about a 4 to 1. All right, let's see about this. One, two. Oh, shit. Oh, not shit. One, two, three. Chugga, chugga, choo, choo. Yep. Yeah. So here's the problem. I can only attack from this hex. So can I get 14 in that hex? I don't know, probably. You know, I mean, very easily. Um, can I get more than that? I can't get 28. But 14 sounds good. So we'll move these guys. One, two, three, four. I forgot. One, two, three. Chugga, chugga, choo. Four. Okay, there's that. And now I can position some more units um, in into play. But the attack on this, I could have surrounded it and hit it with two to one odds. Of course, if I get an attacker eliminated, which is still there, uh, that would be very, very bad, <laughs> you know? So I kind of don't want to do that. I feel like I'm actually making some nice ground up in the north here. Uh, it doesn't feel anything like World War II. I'm not capturing hordes of units in the Blitz. I'm not gaining lots of ground. I'm fighting something really weird here. I don't want against this thing, which is very pleasing. That's control of the rail line, and that's going to make it really hard. And, you know, I mean, I may have just lost with the Russians by making the setup I did. It was very, very powerful on the one side, but we get a defender back too. The, he's not got anywhere to retreat, so he's dead. Um, no advance because there was no defensive bonus there, and now the Russians are going to have to worry even more. Uh, other attacks, just a couple of them. Yep, no broad fronts here. 11, 15... 24, 28, 2 to 1 again. It's the best I can do, it seems. It's an exchange. Okay, exchange is weird in this. And some people have uh, postulated this is a typo. So these are based on their attack strength. That wasn't absolutely clear in the original. Well, that actually seemed not to be the case in the original design, but they just said the strength. Um, uh, so this is 10 points that are dead. I have to lose 10 points of Germans now. Now, the best 10 I can use is probably a seven and a four. The problem there is the movement rates, but we're okay. So that's actually, I lost 11, no doubling, so no advance. And then over here, I have 14, which is, again, a 2 to 1. And that's a defender back, too. Swamps don't give you any defensive bonus, so the Russians could just jump back in there, but they're no longer defending, so they'd have to attack if they did that. Their line is beginning to really dissolve up here, and that means I've got to do something. I've got to either weaken this line or fall back, <laughs> one or the other. Um, neither one's terribly pleasing, but there's no particular reason to hold the Germans back here. Uh, so with all the rail movement, I can probably fling myself back pretty easily. Just drop a unit in Moscow, and it lets them build up this line a little bit more quickly. And you can see they fell back hard. Um, with those rail movements, it's fairly easy to run away. Give up a lot of ground here. And this is going into October of 41. You know, I mean, territory has fallen now in significant amounts. <laughs> but uh, not in a particularly historically believable manner. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll probably wander away for a while. Okay, the Germans, again, they get... Uh, Another one of their eight pointers. I had enough points for that. And now it's time to look for weak spots in the Russian line again because it's moved. It, you know, everything's changed. And again, it's really not easy, at least for me, to assess 
what I need. Um, and it's not a matter that it's, you know, a mental great challenge in any particular hex. It's just there's a fair amount of hexes. I got to figure out the odds for each one and try to see do I have the kind of advantage that I would want to make an attack. Now, in a game like Third Reich, um, and in most later games that have this kind of operational feel to it, generally the side that's on the attack, like the Germans should be at this point, should be able to pick quite a few spaces. And, and pretty much wherever they want to attack, they can do so. Uh, they just, you know, kind of have to maybe if they want to optimize that, which they probably should, they have to put more thought in. But for the most part, they can look at the terrain and say, you know, this is where I'm going to hit. And you find that space. Here, maybe it's just my unfamiliarity with the way the rivers work. The later games have generally used them a little bit better uh, and with some of the other mechanisms. But really, honestly, it feels just like um, it's the fact that I can't get a reasonable attack almost anywhere along the line. <laughs> um, now, that would be reasonable if I'm not supposed to be in my steamroller phase of the war. And eh, it's kind of running down now, but, you know, uh, that, that's been sort of the, the real problem I have here. Um, when I face this kind of situation, in other games, in more recent games, things like Panzerkrieg, I look at it and I say, okay, my offensive has, you know, kind of ground down to a halt. Maybe I can pick a, a hex or two that's really important to attack, but for the most part, I'm not going to be attacking across the front anymore. This game started that way. And, you know, again, if I didn't think the Germans had to attack, I would do it. What's kind of interesting, though, is it's training you that, you know what? Maybe you can conduct offensives without being able to, um, you know, get a decent attack anywhere. <laughs> and, uh, and only, uh, you know, hunt down those very special cases. I just don't like the work involved in it. And I wouldn't like it even if the system was more realistic, if I was at this kind of balance point, hey, can I still push a few more hexes somewhere important, whatever. I usually don't like to think in those terms. I don't like to make that kind of optimization. Some people don't like handling logistics in games. I don't like doing all, all this kind of, uh, this kind of addition uh, and odds comparisons. I like to play more by, by feel when possible. Of course, up here, you know, the choices that I made with the Russians not to defend up there have kind of made that the area where the Germans can easily at least threaten, but it's all by mobility rather than like, uh, you know, really blowing holes through the line or anything. Okay, so God knows what I'm doing, but I've launched a spearhead attack here trying to break through up in the north. And I got this. Now these are all two to one attacks running across here, so. God knows what they're going to do. I hope they're two to one. And then I moved some units around. <laughs> some of them taking stupid rail routes and then moving. <laughs> like, uh, in order to, uh, I don't know, tighten this up a little bit. But I've got like a huge hole up in the north that I just don't have big units up there. And I figure they'd get picked on. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, though, honestly. Like, if the Russians counterattack they will probably be putting themselves in a more stretched out uh, situation. Um, the real problem here was I didn't shift my Russians centerward, northward quickly enough. Um, it was pretty obvious, I think, that something like this was gonna be possible. You know, except that I'm kinda cheating and letting rails run through the cities now. Uh, I had some questions about that and when it came down to it, I kinda couldn't do anything if they couldn't. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what's this? This is like 14 and 14, I would guess. So, I probably want to do this attack first, see what comes of it. Um, I don't see any real capacity for cutting things off. I'm just trying to blow my way through. So that's a 2 to 1. Defender eliminated. 
and we get to cross the river and we'll do that here with that stock this should be another two to one another two fourteens against a seven double this fourteen not as good that's going to be an exchange but i only have to lose five strength points and that's pretty easy Um, the game would not work, it would not be as easy for the attacker if, uh, if those exchanges didn't go where they would. And I think this is two to one. Nineteen. This one was the hard one to get together because I had to run my tanks there. Um, thirty-five. Oh, maybe not. Uh, maybe I screwed up. Twelve. Nineteen. 27, 35, looks like I only have 39 uh, against 18. Yeah, it's 2 to 1. I thought I had 3 to 1 there, actually. Oops. Uh, well, this could really suck. Because I got an attacker eliminated and lost more. And you know what? I'm not going to worry about the fact that I miscounted. Because, to me... I wouldn't give a shit when I was playing. I'd be like, fuck it, you know? <laughs> I don't care about this game. <laughs> and I really don't. Um, and up here, we have a two to one as well. And that's a four attacker back, two. Attacker back, shit. Okay, well, what's kind of cool there is I can shift like this. And that gets me more flexibility to get in onto one of these units, which, as they spread out this way, I was considering more. But, it also tightens things up, and the Russians are perhaps going to be able to put more forces down there. The big thing is that the Russians can kind of give up this side of the map. There aren't that many Finns, or that many units allowed in Finland, so it's kind of hard um, to really do a massive outflank. As we can see, the Russians have been able to react there and were able to provide a really kind of painful front to begin with. Now, though, there's a big gaping hole, and it leads right to Moscow. That can't be good. Uh, Moscow goes, we get less re replacement points. Same thing with Stalingrad and, uh, and Leningrad. Um, so, of course, those are the only cities of any importance. <laughs> So we kind of had, do have to defend all three of them as solidly as we can. Have the Russian reaction? Yeah, I mean, we're giving up ground like historically was given up. There's no question about that. One of the problems is we have four points replacements. Everything that was killed was a five-point unit. That may be an interesting facet to the game. Um, is to try to provoke something like that if the... Russians haven't lost any four-point units. Well, let's not give them a replacement this turn. Let's hunt stacks that don't have any four-point units. Anyway, um, how strong is this? It's hard to tell. There's like a weak spot here, but I would have to soak to take advantage of it. Not necessarily a big problem. Getting Moscow would be worthwhile. Up here, we had to divert one of the units down. You can see... Um, Falling back here, giving up Crimea, potentially. I mean, why not? It's not worth anything. You'll never see, you know, a Siege of Sebastopol or anything like that in this game. Uh, which is fine. Who cares? You know. A um, little worried. I've got to hold the line going to Leningrad. Of course, the winter can fix that, but um, simply because... Like, I can't just let it collapse and be isolated. That, that causes, causes some problems, right? Um, so I do have to kind of hold something like a line. Um, historically, did Leningrad, you know, did the Siege of Leningrad kind of, was it, would it be possible in the game? I'm not even sure. Uh, it seems like there's too many summer turns, but... Yeah, there's too many summer turns. It, it, would, uh, it would collapse eventually, I think. Uh, but anyway. Looking at this and seeing the land being given up and everything, you kind of say, hmm, it is kind of historical. I mean, 
other than the things it tries to tell you about how many attacks you you know you successfully make and that there aren't, aren't really these huge encirclements and stuff like that early in the war. Uh, other than avoiding those things, how much different is it from, say, an area control game or a point-to-point -point game that abstracts a lot of this shit? And you can just kind of say, well, okay, there's a design for effect thing in play. This is why I hate design for effect. Because, you know, in a sense there is. There's this mechanism that doesn't match to reality, but gives you an effect that isn't terribly unrealistic. And, you know, it's where it doesn't match to reality. And I was thinking like Maria with the cards. Yeah, you get things happening that are not a historical in nature, as the final results may be. But you also give these really ridiculous impressions, you know? Um, at least with Maria, the cards don't seem to represent anything having to do with reality at all. I mean, you really have to stretch to make sense out of them. But with this, there are things that look realistic that are not happening in a realistic fashion. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure that that's terribly different. I mean, if you give me, you know, make-believe shit, I don't care if the make-believe shit... I, how much does it matter that the make-believe shit it kind of looks like military units instead of, oh yeah, I'm playing a playing card game <laughs> to determine what happens on, on, on the board. Winter's here now. Um, that's going to have movement allowances, railroad bonus cut to five squares, and then all the swamps north of the Divina up here are frozen. All the lakes north of Moscow, which includes up here, are frozen. You can just walk over them. The Lugo, Volkov, Sphere, Northern Divina. Uh, Luga, Volkov, and the Northern Divina. I don't know where this other one is. It might be, yeah, it's this. Uh, those are all frozen for whatever effect that has. That's going to be a big deal because now I can kind of blast through um, some of the Russians here, and it's, you know, I forgot winter's coming, right? That's gonna uh, desperately affect things. I'm willing to make mistakes and live with them, though, in this bad weather. The Germans have some real advantages here in the north. We may well see Leningrad fall very shortly. Uh, also, trying to concentrate here, I think that's just a two to one trying to cross into there, and again, a two to one trying to uh, breach over there, um, you know. Casualties are adding up pretty nasty, though. I mean, it looks like I'm making a lot of ground, but it may not be enough. The situation in the north is deteriorating. A couple of holes punched in, although they're, you know, non-successes in, in areas. Uh, however, down here, boom, big attacker eliminated. The danger of those two to ones, but I can't seem to make anything. You know, it feels like I have to rely on two to ones to be able to gain any ground. It's worked well enough. But, again, <laughs> room for probably what would have been a moderate counterattack. The Russians could have maybe attacked down here or something. Um, I'm just continuing to fall back, mainly because I don't think I had a good opportunity for a nice attack that wouldn't leave something open up in the north. And the north is where I'm running out of room. Eventually, my replacement rights are gonna be filling my troops up more quickly than the German troops. In fact, that starts on this turn. And we've got snow, which slows down the rail movement, but it doesn't prevent it enough. You know, I've still gotta cover all of these rail lines. I can't like dispatch a bunch of troops to go do something, and then maybe they're out of position and the Germans can just slip through on the rails. Um, the supply requirements in this game are weak enough. <laughs> oh, there's a nice defect. Uh, are weak enough that uh, that it just seems like you could do a pretty good job of exploiting through um, the results of some sort of Russian uh, counterattack. Jeez. <laughs> 
I forgot about the half movement. I've been dealing with the rail reduction, but I think, oh, snow, generally that's good movement, and it just passed my mind. So things have been a lot more mobile than they should be for the game. Not necessarily for history. I only made one attack with the slowed movement, and uh, that w actually, no, they maybe they made a second one here. They got an exchange here, but over here they made one attack. Um, I threw in an extra six point unit, unfortunately. Uh, thinking, oh, I wouldn't have to attack with all the units, but yeah, you do, you have to attack. Every unit that's adjacent to an enemy has to attack, so you can't withhold a unit. You could attack a different hex with that unit. Anyway, I got the big attacker eliminated and lost all my striking power up there, basically. Launch a three to one attack here, I hope. <laughs> Eight, nine, 10, uh, against the Finns. There's nothing garrisoning Finland anymore. It's gonna be really tough to prevent Helsinki from falling. If that falls, these guys are not quite out of supply because they can trace all the way back through here, but that probably won't remain open. <laughs> uh, three, defender, back two, with no advance possibility. Oh. And clearly if I go to Helsinki, I'm a little better defended, but then these units can go besiege it and have the same effect as cutting it off. Just takes more units. They're gonna try to cut in here at Leningrad. Still trying to punch our way through to Moscow. Still, all these are two to one attacks. Uh, for whatever that's worth. Covering, you know, got a little closer to try to cover Helsinki a little better. Yeah, we're gonna keep getting hit. It may fall. Uh, we're hoping we can connect this up before that one way or another. Germans are relying on essentially you know, a quick shot at a one-to-one -one on Leningrad. I don't feel like I have anything better to do. And we're doing an attack here. Basically, if we can break this, that starts to cause problems. We're losing Finland, though. Yeah, that's bad. Let's see what that one-to-one -one brings us. It brings us an attacker eliminated. I think this game is about over. Um, Of course, I fucked up lots of stuff, I'm sure. That's a three to one there for what it's worth, which isn't much. Oh, joy in exchange there, too. And it looks to me like the Russians are gonna be able to wipe this one up. We take Helsinki, we're gonna start clearing out this crap with some three to one attacks. We could have done a three to one down here instead, but it seems to me it's better to clear out those backfields and then finish off what's left. All right, I'm gonna call it here. Um, I mean, I could play it out to the bitter end. It's pretty obvious. Uh, the Germans probably won't get wiped out off the map, but they're never gonna be in a position where they're really able to take on the Russians again. So this is my misplaying of Stalingrad. Um, like I said, I probably got some rules wrong. I certainly, you know, in fact, I know I did. I remember a couple of places where I've mentioned it. <coughs> um, and I certainly didn't, you know, try to play it as carefully as one would. Uh, the kind of people who really liked this game probably were very much into being completely anal retentive about, you know, finding the perfect attacks and everything like that. I had a lot of trouble with it. That initial Russian defense, strong here, leaving things open here, I had trouble figuring out what to do with that. There's only so many units you can throw up to Finland. Now, I could have put some smaller units there and that might have helped me uh, run the outflank a little better and that might have made the Russians pay a price for the heavy defense that they had. But I had a tough, tough time finding anything better than a two to one attack effort. And eh, I probably cheated on both sides. You know, the Germans got a little bit extra movement in some turns with the snow. Uh, were able to launch some attacks that could have gotten them somewhere. It wasn't enough. Uh, and, you know, with the Russians being able to counterattack here, pretty much defending the line here, can I get anywhere? Not really. Um, I got the rail lines covered here, so there's nothing's gonna slip the bro. Helsinki becomes unimportant. I can actually run out of there. You know, I mean, there's huge gaps where supply is gonna be able to get through no matter what. Yeah, how realistic is that? Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, that's what we see for this. Uh, I don't know what's next. I started reading the rules to something, but 
I'm nowhere near uh, far enough in it. And I probably should dig out something that isn't going to be, you know, too big a rules uh, commitment. It's actually one of the problems I've been having is I'm playing a lot, I guess. Uh, but that doesn't leave me a lot of room to be learning the next game. Especially, you know, when these games are fairly short. That's what I've been in the mood for, but I kind of want to get something, you know, about the same size game. Maybe a little longer, but with a little bit more detail, a little bit more complicated rules. But it doesn't seem to be happening for me right now. All righty. Uh, let's send this up and uh, come with my review for whatever that's worth.